A uh, little bit of background for me and my family. I'm a third generation veteran. Uh, my grandfather was a Korean War veteran. Uh, my father was in the Air Force and served during Vietnam. Uh, my family also had a loss in Vietnam. Uh, my great uncle, Major Robert Ball, was killed during Vietnam in 1968. So we felt that loss personally. Um, while I am a veteran, fortunately for me, I served during peacetime. I was not in any battle conflicts, um, so I made it home relatively unscathed. Um, but apart from that, I, I served with a lot of people that stayed in once the war on terror started and continue to serve to this day. So I am familiar you know, with the hardships that those guys and ladies face. Um, you know, and even when they come back physically whole, they're not always coming back mentally sound. So there's, there's an ongoing need uh, for those people to be looked after and you know, for people to be understanding of the situations that they find themselves in. Um, you know, we're, we're at a, a critical time in our nation. You know, for the last 40 years, we've not had a draft. All of our service members are volunteer, and that's, it's incredibly generous of the people that do that, but it's a small percentage. I looked up statistics on this, and it's 0.4% of the U.S. population has served in the military. That's small. You know, and these days, those people are continuing to be in service. If they're deployed, they're deployed multiple times, so they're constantly in and out of that theater. So, you know, their families are suffering a long time with this stuff, but we've got to be vigilant of that and support those people when they come back. Um, kind of as Mark Mallory had said earlier, since September 11th, we've had a, a lot of soldiers be killed in the battle theaters of Iraq and Afghanistan. You know, his numbers are slightly different than mine. The statistics I found probably include in theater deaths, but over 7,000 current service members have been killed just in that conflict. Um, I'm just gonna talk about three of them, um, some that I know, some that we should know as a community here. Um, while I served, I was in an infantry unit, a 25th Infantry Division in Scofield Barracks, Hawaii, which everybody thought was a cush position because it was Hawaii, but it was still the Army and we were a light infantry unit, so we did a lot of training and battle prep. And during the course of my time there, I was lucky to come across this guy named Kyle Eggers. He was a year younger than me, came into our unit, you know, as I was there and established for a while, and he ended up in the company that I was in. We served the headquarters and the executive staff of the battalion, and Kyle was the driver for our sergeant major. Just kind of a goofball character, you know, just big guy, you know, full of life, but kind of a goofball, which in the military you can tell some goofballs get in trouble from time to time because it's hard for them to not goof off when it's appropriate. So he was one of those guys that would cut up and, you know, get reprimanded from time to time, but a great guy. You know, I, I lost track of him after I got out, and then a few years later, unfortunately, I found out that Kyle had been killed. Uh, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about Kyle. Kyle was 27 when he was killed. Um, he was killed by an IED in Iraq, um, and I was crushed when I found out. Um, partly because it was the first person that I'd really come across that I'd directly knew and interacted with that have been killed. So it was it was hard because, you know, you know you've got friends that are still out there, but you don't know what kind of hardships they're facing or what kind of risk they're in. So it, it took me aback and, you know, I was in long out of the military by that point, but it, it hit home and it, it made it real for me if it hadn't been already. Um, but the, the real hard part for me is that Kyle had a young family. Um, at the time that he was killed, his wife had two two-year-olds and a one-year-old. and you know, I, I want them to be remembered because they've been bearing the burden of this without Kyle being here. Um, another one from this area that I think all of us know about but I want to take time to remember today is Staff Sergeant Matt Maupin. Um, Matt Maupin was the first missing in action soldier on the war in Iraq. Um, he was killed in action April 9th of 2004. Um, fortunately, he was not recovered until almost four full years later. And during that time, his family stayed on vigil here. You know, despite the pain that they were going through, his parents, Carolyn and Keith, not only you know, mourned publicly and worried publicly for their son, they actually did some things to make it easier for other soldiers, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, uh, Naval folks. They founded an organization called the Yellow Ribbon Support Center, which to this day continues to do care packets for soldiers that are serving in theater. Um, they also do job assistance for veterans that are coming back from the military, and they do scholarships in the names of fallen soldiers. So 
like to take some time to think about the Maupin family as well today. Um, lastly, and one that should hit home for all of us here, is Captain Seth Mitchell. Um, Seth was a freshman my senior year in high school, so I did not know him well. But post high school, um, Seth was a 1997 Loveland graduate. Um, he went to college and then he decided to go in the Marine Corps as a helicopter pilot. Uh, we lost Seth October 26, 2009 in a helicopter crash at Forward Operating Base Dwyer in Afghanistan. Um, he's laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery and got to visit there a few years ago. Uh, it's a, a holy place, you know, a place that's very reverent. Uh, it, you know, it hurts a little bit knowing that somebody that I know is there, but nonetheless, you know, the, the, the battle's real. The hardships are real. The families that have lost have this loss every day, not just today. So, you know, one thing that hit me as I was preparing this was just trying to think about what's gone on, you know, in the time that these men have been lost. And it's not just men. We've lost women in theater as well. So, you know, I'm not trying to make this just about men. But, you know, you know, Kyle was 27 when he was killed. His, his children were little. You know, he'd be 40 now. His kids would be 16 and 14. You know, so what kind of things are they missing out on with their father being gone? You know, what kind of lessons would he have passed down to them and still in them that they're missing out on? You know, that, that hits home. You know, Staff Sergeant Maupin, he was 24 when we lost him. He'd be 37 now. You know, what kind of life would he have had after that? You know, think of the anguish that his parents and his family and friends have had to endure during this time. You know, and look at the positive things that they've done with that loss. You know, Sergeant Mitchell, you know, would be 38 now, it's been eight years, you know, but that, that wound is still fresh for his parents and his family and friends. So you know, if I can just leave anything with anybody today is that Memorial Day is a sacred day and there's still a need and there will continue to be a need. So keep all those people in your thoughts and prayers and just remember that freedom's not free. There's plenty of people that are laying down the sacrifice for that every day. I was fortunate enough to hear a speech from General Abrams yesterday while I was at the Indy 500 and he, he mentioned a number at the time that was pretty staggering even for me that at the time yesterday he had a, a fairly accurate count there were 180,000 active duty U.S. service members serving right at this moment so you know that's a huge number of folks that are out there on our behalf keeping us safe so we can live and enjoy the freedoms that we have so if you can take something away today keep that in mind keep those people in mind and definitely remember the people that have laid down their lives for us and for our freedom.